Hey, look at the camera, dickhead. Yes, girl. Lol. Fucking hell, Toby. Toby. Stop sticking your head out. Toby, I'm gonna get into an accident. Toby, get the fuck back inside, man. Hey, guys, so we just left the vets for Tofu's checkup post-surgery because we had to get some of the teeth removed but now they're all good, hey Tofu? I'm just listening to YouTube videos that my friend Jonathan sent me he's always sending me good content and there's stuff about like growing your platform, growing your, your outreach and all of that so that's what you're hearing in the background Welcome back to One Out TV, guys. Hello. This is my class, Finn, Mandy, Jessica. Let's make this nice, quick, and short. I'm gonna ask you guys a couple of quick questions. I want your most honest answer. And if you don't tell the truth, I'll tell the truth for you. <laughs> this is more for the bodybuilders, but you guys can answer this too, yeah? What is your best feature and why? My chest. Yes. Because my girlfriend says I'm a double D. My shoulders. I've, I've seen them growing. My calves. <laughs> Fantastic. You've been given an elephant. You can't give it away or sell it. What do you do with it? Put it in the back. Yeah, <laughs> Backyard. I, yeah, I, as a pet. I'll eat it. <laughs> oh. We're gonna have to. <laughs> we're gonna have to have a fight off camera. I give children rides okay, around a park. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, that's, that's a good answer, Jess. <laughs> what a terrible person! What a terrible person! This challenge or this eight-week challenge or this this year? What muscle did you improve on the most? My belly. I gained more <laughs> than I lost any. My tricep. <laughs> my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. We finish this interview. We all step outside. All of you find a lottery ticket each. It's 10 mil. What are you going to do with it? I'm running away with it. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to tell anyone about it. I'll tell people about it. But I'll share with my family. If you're only allowed to drink one beverage for the next month, the whole month, okay? Nothing else you're allowed to drink, yeah? What would it be? Hot Milo. Water. I'm happy with water. Yeah, same. Oh. Yeah. Water. Boring. <laughs> if you had a choice between two superpowers, being invisible or flying, what would it be? Ooh, invisible. I'd say invisible, yes. Invisible. Yes. Alright, the reason why I ask that, guys, is two types of people in the world, yeah? People who like to be in the spotlight and people who like to work behind the scenes. Invisible, work behind the scenes. Okay? I would have chose flying, but at the same time, I, I'd rather, like, not walk places. That's why. <laughs> What's harder to deal with? A we challenge? Or your partner's problems? Probably partner's problems. Eight week challenge. Eight week challenge. Yeah. Are you a hunter or a gatherer? Hunter. Hunter. Pew pew. Gatherer. You're not supposed to be a hunter, bro. You're, you're a female. <laughs> go gather, go gather berries in that. <laughs> what is the last gift you gave someone? Oh, a cat carrier. Money. I'm <laughs> very practical. <laughs> Food? Yes. Okay, she made it. Uh, oh, earrings. Okay. Who was it? Our friend. Very nice. Have you heard of Andrew Tate? Yeah. You like him? I don't know, uh, very controversial guy, but he has some good, yeah. you know, yeah. mentor things. Yeah, very controversial, a little bit too confident, borderline arrogant. Do you like him? No. Why? A little bit too full of himself. Why? What do you mean why? He gives analogy that he thinks it's right, which is fine. I think he knows he's right. Nobody is 100% right. Based off his life experience, he would be. Yeah, based on his life experience, but too too arrogant. I like his confidence, actually. I actually look up to his confidence. Not that I like him, but not that I don't dislike dislike him. I just I see what his approach is. I get what you mean. He is a bit arrogant, but he is very confident, and he's very like confident in terms of what he says. And he always backups, and he's a really good speaker. He speaks very well, so that's something that I kind of like admire. Let me tell you something. Yeah, it's a man of a lot of life experience. That's why he's the way he is. Vin, do you like him? Indifferent. I fucking love him. He's, he's the man. He's the man. That's one out TV with my class. <laughs> so guys, you wouldn't believe just what just happened. Fucking my dog went missing. I'm supposed to drop my dog off sumo to my ex's place, Julie. So I tried to open the gate to fucking take him into my car and the other two dogs fucking got loose. 
all hell broke loose. I still had the sumo on the leash. And I'm like, fuck, what do I do? Fuck it, I can't drop this kind and go chase the other kinds. And my mum came out to help me. My mum came out and she held me, so I told her to hold sumo while I fucking drove around looking for Topu and Kari. Because I know the way Topu runs, yeah? Every time she's made the break, she runs all the way to the top of the road to Kabamata Road and fucking goes to Smithfield or some shit. Anyway, so this time I drove all the way, I'm like, fuck, fuck. She's not here, I don't want to drive up and down fucking Smithfield, like Kabamata Road. So instead I just um, came back and I drove around the block of my house. Luckily, I fucking found him in the street and I was driving, I go, oi, you, get the fuck in the car. And then they just popped in the car, casually. As I got home to drop him off, Cardi didn't want to get out of the car. She must really want to go on a like, little adventure, so poor thing. But anyways, it's not an adventure, I'm fucking taking this dickhead home. Hey Sumo, you dumb cunt. Oh, the stress of having three dogs, oh my god, I had the biggest headache just then, but yeah. So I'm in the tattoo studio today, just finishing up my arm. Oh my god, starting on my body, my chest, and my stomach. Fuck my life, I'm not looking forward to this. A few moments later. Oh my god. Finished, guys. I'm done. So guys, just finished the arm with Johnny. And now we're doing the front part of my body. We're about to begin. What's up guys, welcome back to One Out TV. We're gonna go around the gym today and find out public opinion on Andrew Tate. Let's go. What are you training today? I got arms and shoulders. Who are you training with? Where, where are your boys? I don't know where Ben is. He's over there. He's just running away. Can they keep up with you? Sometimes. Alright, quick question. Do you know who Andrew Tate is? Of course I do. Do you like him? I love him. Why? He speaks the truth. And that's what I like. What about the truth do you like about him? The way he speaks about masculinity. What has he said that has inspired you? What, what, what's his main point? There's a lot of things that he said that I would say inspired me. You're putting me on the spot. I can't think right now. Terrible, bro. Terrible. I'll come back to you, bro. Alright, bro. What are you training today? Training uh, chest, tries, a bit of shoulders. Uh, first question. Do you like Andrew Tate? He's alright. He's a bit of an alpha male, isn't he? What, what do you like and don't, don't you like about him? Sometimes I feel like he can be a bit too arrogant. I think if he has that caliber of success, he should be a bit more humble. And that's pretty much it. Well, what do you like about him? The fact that he has an unbreakable mindset. Oh, I like that one. That's a really good one. <laughs> Thanks, bro. What are you training today? Thanks, bro. First and only question, bro. Do you like Andrew Tate? Uh, man, he's a sick cut. Why? Because he's, he's just Andrew. Thanks, bro. Me too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, who else is there? If you see anyone over there, just, just let me know, yeah? Eric, what are you doing, bro? Uh, I talk a bit of abs. Yeah? yeah. Talk to me about your ab workout. Oh, it's a bit of a routine that you gave me, so... I gave it to him. Yeah, you gave it to me, so, you know, 100 down to 1, but 40 on top of all these uh, different different types of exercises, 10 different types, and just keep going until you burn out. Nice, bro, nice. See, I gave him that workout, I gave him that workout. Quick question, bro. What do you know about Andrew Tate? Mate, he's a man, he's, you know, he's a realist, he speaks his mind, he says it as it is, and look, man, he has a, you know, a brighter view of life, and he speaks truth. What's your favorite uh, quote or point from him? Uh, just recently, uh, something he said with um, some old, my old man passed recently, so it's something that you showed me actually. Uh, it's basically just he did he did his he did his job as a as a father, raised me past when I was eighteen, and e everything else was a bonus. So it, it really it really struck a chord with me. Thanks, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. See, he's a good bloke, bro. He's a good bloke. <laughs> That's it for today, bro. That's it for today. What's good, guys? Welcome back to my channel, One Out TV. I think I should probably change it to One Out TV. Eh? One Out TV sounds better. Huh? Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, if I should change that, change it to One Out TV or One Out Training. So I just left the gym on my way to get my haircut, my weekly haircut with my barber. By the way, top barber. I'm on a very tight schedule today. Yeah, I got a very short day and I only had 60 minutes to train today. About halfway through my workout, I realized, fuck me, I shouldn't be training because I'm starting to get itchy and I'm starting to sweat. So I'm going to have to call it a day. What's happening today? I won't forget. Come on, make me sweat. Jalapeno, jalapeno. I like it hot. But we ain't there yet. Come on, let me get. Jalapeno, jalapeno. Fresh. Thanks, hey. Hello. Hey, thumbs up. Bug 
Yeah, you look so young again, man. <laughs> young with hair. How good does my haircut look, guys? Fucking fresh, eh? So yeah, guys, for those that don't know, I shaved my head bald because um, I was an extra for a TV series called um, Last King of the Cross. It's a TV series about John Ibrahim, the bloke who was running the underworld, apparently. It's off his um, autobiography. He pretty much like owned all the clubs in the cross. Very, very nice guy, intelligent bloke too, when I met him on, on set. So stories about his life, that's what the filming about. And they asked me to shave my head, so that's why I went bald for a bit. I didn't mind the bald look, you know, it made me look extra, you know, tough. But I miss hair. I miss having hair. I see Milan every week for my haircut. I've been seeing Milan for the last 15 years cutting my hair, this bloke. And um, for those that are asking, I cut my hair once a week, every week. And I just feel more confident when I'm looking my best and I feel more empowered. If you're looking for a barber who's reliable, punctual, and very, 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 very experienced, I'd recommend him. Milan, the real Mickey Carter. So I'm on the way in for my meeting with my boss. Made it, guys. I rushed my meeting to get here. Eh? Listen, I got a, I got a podcast to do. Okay, I ain't got time to sit around and talk about fucking memberships. And we're getting a good episode in today. It's gonna be a juicy ass episode. It's gonna quench your thirst, guys. Fucking Matrix ain't stopping us today, mate. But I got news for you. You can put it up your ass. How are you feeling with this goal of like one million dollars and and are you getting closer to it? As I got older, as my mates around me started having kids and I started seeing everyone have kids, I thought, oh yeah, you know, I might have kids, so I, I wouldn't mind kids. Well, thank you so thank much. You, thank you. I'm back at the gym, fucking busy, kids everywhere. As you can see, guys, it's fucking busy. I got nothing to do, but I might just walk around and um, tell all the boys to, you know, use a towel or some shit. Hi, Daniel, this is uh, Andrew calling for Fitness Public. How you doing, bro? Hey, man, just a quick question. Um, have you been giving your tag to your mates? So just remind him, please, okay? Next time's a $50 fine, yeah, bro? Thanks, brother. Okay, bye. I'm on the fucking boat. Oh, yeah. At the end of the battle, whoever has the most thing wins. And then whoever gets the most hits goes in rankings and shit. Guys, don't download TikTok, guys, it'll ruin your life. <laughs> hey guys, so I just trained with the boys, Arthur and his Koei, uh, Dave. Really good session with the kids. I actually met Dave before and I funny, funnily I forgot his name, but I actually met him a couple of weeks ago or a month ago at uh, Cobham with a bunch of other boys. Oh, fuck, I'm so bad with names, I'm so bad with faces sometimes. But he told me he wanted to be a personal trainer, so that's why he's here to train with me. So let's see where he goes in the next couple of years, eh? I asked Arthur, you know, how's he going with looking for a job? I think he's still trying to find his feet a little bit. So I think I better push him a little bit more on that. And that's how we get by. Boom, bah. What's going on, lad? What's happening? What's up, cuss? Boys, week one, intraday. I oh, know, intraday. Cheat code. <laughs> you know what was great? Full four? Having legs. And I've seen that bloke bodybuilding. Oh, hell yeah, man. We just finished the confit program, day one. Spoke to the boys about gratitude and I'm um, feeling grateful. And I was talking a little bit about, you know, depression and um, how I was pretty depressed in my first year of jail when I was at Bathurst. Anyways, I was just talking about how I was depressed and I was doing nothing with my life, just sitting around, walking around the yard, playing cards, reading, just really doing nothing. I was asking the boys, you know, do they agree that, you know, if you're relatively depressed, but you practice gratitude, can you be depressed and grateful at the same time? This is debatable, obviously, but I personally think that if you are practicing gratitude on a regular basis, it's very hard to be depressed. I wish I could like record the training session and then I talk with our boys, because, you know, those moments are really, um, powerful but we can't really take a phone or a camera into the our sessions so it is what it is it's more off to reby campbelltown where it's the girls and the young boys which are like about between 10 to 15 years old that's going to be a challenge welcome back guys i just picked up my girlfriend say hello babe Hi. we're going to office works because i need to buy a whiteboard so i can write all my workouts on this is this is the one we're going with guys it's not bad eh Look, I just want to see how long you can hold it in this position. Like what? Go, let's go. No. 
four fingers, four fingers, That's and so a thumb. That's so easy. There you go. Nice, no, not. You know how, you're not that strong. You're not that strong. Keep walking, you're keep walking all, all the way, all the way to the no. register. Take it back. How, how are you going to carry shopping? I do. Oh my god, it's so much easier now. So I'm having um, a little rant, yeah? Let's fill everyone in on my day. It's been a busy morning, busy day. Just finished up at the gym. I'm heading out to Reby, Reby Juvenile Justice Center. Anyways, I just finished up at the gym and this bloke that came through was my friend. He's, he's my friend. We were just talking about how um, one of the boys got um, one of the boys got done or something and he went through his phone and he just started deleting things, you know? And he was also deleting fucking messages between like, him and girls that he used to talk to because he didn't want his missus to ever, you know, if ever she ever went through his phone like to see who the girls he used to talk to anyways told me he came across a convo and it was labeled instagram user so he went through the convo to see what it was and it was voice messages and he listened to the voice messages and he realized that was our friend who had passed on after going through cancer and he deleted the chat the moment he told me that i started like i started getting upset i go bro what the fuck did you delete him for why would you delete a memory of a friend who passed on, like, but you can't get that back if you delete it. And he's like, nah, it wasn't like that. Like, like you know, like it's a part of my life that I moved on from. I go, what do you mean you moved on, bro? You don't delete shit, bro. And this is someone who's had like a very, like, um, who had a very important role and it was a very influential person in your life at one point in, the, in time. And what, you're just gonna delete it? And it's not like they had any bad blood or anything. I don't know, in my opinion, memories are very important because they link you to certain parts of your life that, you know, that were pivotal moments. I really didn't think that he should have deleted it because, you know, it broke my heart that, you know, that you can delete a memory of someone so quick, you know, and it was like, it wasn't just like, just memories, it was like old chats, you know, if you really like didn't want to go through it, you didn't have to look at it, just but have it there in case one day, you know, you start thinking about the person, thinking about the good times, you want to, you know, reminisce a bit and like go through it, listen to his voice because they were like voice memos, you can't get voice memos anymore. When people pass on, yeah, you look at their photos, but to actually hear their voice and watch a video of them, uh, like that's another level. That, that, and people don't understand, like they take it for granted that the day and age that we live in of technology that, you know, we're able to have really good quality memories of someone through video and voice and footage of them rather than just photos. It really broke my heart and he was like, oh bro, like, you know, now that you say it like that, like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have deleted it. And I go, yeah, bro, you shouldn't have deleted it, man, because he lives through our memories and that's the only way he lives. Like when someone dies, that's how they live. They live through other people and the, the, the things that they passed on and the memories that they've left behind. That's how they, they continue to live. And I don't know, it, was, it just made me really upset that, you know, he could delete it like that. But I'm not angry at him, I'm just angry at like how, um, immature he is <laughs> because I know one day he's gonna learn from this and he wouldn't do the same thing again twice shout out to Anthony but I love ya miss ya you know, I really wish you were still around uh, I really hope you know no one deletes any of their their footage or memory of you unless you know they had really good reason to but I doubt anyone really does off to Ruby Yeah, what's good guys? We're back, I'm back. Me and my poor driving skills, always in a rush before I even fucking put my seatbelt on. We just finished at Reeve. We just trained with the boys group and then we introed ourselves to the girls group. The girls are gonna be a handful. I'm already stressed out about that one. No? It's completely different to dealing with boys. And the boys, you know, we're gonna have a joke, laugh around, muck around. Funny thing we learned about the boys today was um, all of them pretty much have been inside of Juvie at least four times. What a number that is. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me that they've been in and out of Juvie for at least four times each. And there was at least 13 of these kids. Some of them were really keen because they really wanted to be like, um, like you know, strong fitter. They had this little um, alpha or I'd say a little bit of um, testosterone going through them that they wanted to be like top top G of the, of the yard and I was just trying to try to push on to the ones that you know had a little bit of fire in them we spoke to him about a little bit of gratitude and goal setting why it's important to be grateful for things and always staying positive and uh, always having a goal so you can have hope for something better put it simple for him to try and get like try to be relatable so I was like to them boys you know who here wants to be a man in the future you know be a real man like a real fucking man and you know all of them put their hands up and I go you know what a real man does looks after his people, looks after his boys, looks after his mum, his family, 
That, that's what a real man does. And you know, you don't just look after him by protecting him, you look after him by providing for him and making money. That's how a real man looks after him. I don't know if it's really gonna get through to him, really, but um, I hope it does. Sometimes it gets through to him. Sometimes, you know, they have to be a little bit more older, a little bit more mature for it to go through and actually sink in. But most of the time, they just wanna have fun. You know, they just wanna pass time. They don't really wanna be thinking about, like, education and employment, worrying about that yet. Yeah. At the end of the day, most of them are still 11, 12 years old. They're still young kids. So, yeah. Anyways, guys, it's Friday. I'm heading home. I'm gonna go see my girlfriend. Be annoying for a little bit, maybe fart in the face. Let's see what we do today. Just leave it. Coles? Yeah, Coles. It's because I decided to make dessert tonight because I made my girlfriend upset. This vlog is gonna be so bad. It's just for Why? You making me upset. So guys, <laughs> I'm gonna make some gel ice cream and um, a gel caramel slice. Quality. Alright guys, so what I'm gonna use is what's this called, babe? A pot? I'm gonna use a pot, okay? to make my caramel. What I'm gonna make my caramel with is some coconut condensed milk. I'm gonna go as vegan as I can. And I'm making a gel Oreo and Coca-Cola ice cream. So guys, very simple with the, very simple with the Oreo and, oh fuck, I'm gonna get that. What happens when you're short? I gotcha, I gotcha. Ah, ah, ah. All we need is a two liter container, 375 mils of Coke, some Oreos, and some maple syrup. So first off guys, what I'm gonna be doing is, if we were in jail, we wouldn't be using a food processor, we'd just put it in a plastic bag and crush it up, but I ain't feeling like crushing up fucking cookies all day. So I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. Three rows of Oreos is what we need. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna scoop out all the cream. I could only fit this much Oreos in, but what I'll do is I'll just blend it all, real quickly and then I'll throw it in and then I'll um, I'll chop up the rest. So guys, normally would use regular Coke, but I thought, you know what, there's vanilla Coke. It's gonna be ice cream anyways, so let's just make a vanilla ice cream. So normally we'd use a 375 can. What I'll do is, since they're two 250s, okay, one and a third of this can. Two, three, yeah, baby. Very nice. Very finely crushed. But what I'll do is, I'll get the rest of the Oreos in there. So guys, what we're doing with this cream is we're actually gonna reuse this for the slice. Normally, you know, people would just probably throw this in that or they'll just eat it. But yeah, that's what the boys would do. But I'm gonna use this later for the slice later. Okay guys, so as you can see, it's kind of up a little bit. We're gonna add a little bit of sweetener to it. Some high quality maple syrup. One, two, three. Now we'll get a fucking fork, whisk it through. All we'll do is um, I'll thoroughly stir this through and then I'll have a taste and I'll throw it into the freezer. I don't know how it happens, but it just happens, yeah? Don't ask me. It just turns out better than fucking expected. Nice. So you got vanilla chocolate flavor. Pop this into the freezer. Damn it. And that should expand. But, you know, we'll find out in a couple of hours. All right, guys, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, so what we'll do in jail is, normally we'd have a rice cooker to make our condensed milk, yeah? But I ain't cooking it in a rice cooker today, so I'll just cook it in a pot, okay? And the way we used to make our, our caramel was cooking the condensed milk. What we'll do is, we'll get water into the rice cooker. So let's just pretend today this is a rice cooker. And what we'd normally do is, we'd get the tube of condensed milk, we'd um, throw it into the rice cooker, the tube too, and then we'll just let the rice cooker cook the condensed milk until it became a golden brown, and voila! There's your caramel. Because really, we couldn't buy caramel. It wasn't on the buyout. We're going to let that bring to boil before we throw in the cans of condensed milk. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, while I'm setting up the caramel to get cooked, I'm going to be making a base. Babe, where's the tray? So guys, this is the tray that I'm going to be using for the caramel slice. So guys, I'm going to be making the base from a variety of um, Oreos and Scotch fingers. That's what the base is going to be made out of. Yeah, have a look guys, look at that red velvet mix. All right, so what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna throw this in and then I'm gonna mix some um, scotch fingers and then the scotch fingers will add to that base. All right guys, so the water's boiling. Normally, we'd open up the tube for the condensed milk and then I'll let a bit of air in and then close it back up. I don't know why we did that, but that's just the way we did it. Since we're cooking with cans, a little bit different. 
and leave it here for about three hours simmering. You know what? I think I made too much of the base, but fuck, it is what it is. So let's um mix this up so we get a nice blend in the base. Oh, no, it's perfect. All right, guys, so I forgot that we used a tiny bit of butter also to um make the base hard. Oh, oh, sorry, oh. Oh. Sorry. So in case you didn't know, my girlfriend just whacked me in the head with a fucking microwave door. <laughs> but that's all good. All right. All right, that's my dinner. All right, guys, so we're going to move the pot over to simmer and then chuck our lovely condensed milk in. As you can see, this is how we're making our caramel. Okay, guys, as you can see, the base is pretty much done. It is a mixture of regular Oreo, red velvet Oreo, and um, scotch fingers. All right, guys, let's make our base. set here two hours later guys this is the base nice and hard it will crystallize but i mean it needs to cool down but so this is the oreo ice cream what you're hearing in the background is the matrix oh yeah cracker let's uh let this frost up a little bit more guys it's about eight o'clock and we're just having a look let's get this baby out All right, guys found the oreo cream dump all of that in break this up so it melts easier put a lid on this so it doesn't go everywhere Oops, it's melted a bit oh yeah there we go That's the jail fucking caramel slice. Just gonna let it sit now. Oh, cracker. Not the most aesthetic. It will taste good. Hi right, guys, welcome back. This is my girlfriend's lame ass idea. Kmart, $50 challenge. This is the list that we gotta get. Fave snack, fave drink, fave color, fave chocolate, fave lollies. Something that reminds you of the other person, something the other person needs, something for the other person to try. The whole thing, $50 in total. It's not much to work with, but let's get rid of the snack and drinking shit first. Go away, babe. <laughs> go away. I need, a, I need a bean section. Yeah, well, too bad. Go away. I reckon she likes those. From what I remember, she's bought them before, so it's somewhere up in the favourites, I reckon. So she loves to buy the caramel milk uh, eggs, but she also buys the Milky Bar cookies and cream. So I might go with the caramel milk. Guys, I'm stressing out. I don't know what my girlfriend's favorite color is. <laughs> Lol. All right, guys, I'm back in the lolly section because, well, apparently there's no chips in fucking Kmart. So I'm back here to buy chips, or not chips, but lollies to compensate for no chips. You know what? I know she likes clouds. I'll get the clouds. Something the other person needs to try. Mm. Fuck, I'm good. Fave snack. Some of them is two categories in one. Oh, that's my favorite one for me? Yeah, all right. I thought it'd be this because you bought this last time. Oh, yeah. Sour watermelons. Okay. Fave drink? I didn't get you a drink, sorry. Oh, she didn't get me a drink. Unbelievable. No, no. It's not enough options. Coke Zero. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a genius. <laughs> okay, fave color. <laughs> Embarrassing. You know how hard it is to find something green that is like useful? Should have bought lollies. 
there was not there was not a lot of full green things. I wanted green to ones. I wanted to be colour. Like colour, purple. It's everything. <laughs> yeah, plus you like rainbow oh. protein, so a chocolate. I didn't get you favourite, but this is all I have. Oh, caramel for you. Woo! Babe, lollies. Oh, lollies, I okay. guess. Lollies is the same thing as okay. The jelly bean. Fucking cheap. I'm bad. Wait, it's Kmart. Kmart. Mixed yeah. clouds. Because I ate all your mixed clouds. They're not my, my favourite. Yeah, but I ate all of your mixed clouds last time when you ordered it. So I thought they were your favourite. Something that reminds you of the other person. Christmas. Yes, I'd wear that. I'd wear that. Yeah. You must be me. Yeah, this reminds me of you because you keep fucking busting my balls about it. Yay! I want to use it. Thanks. Something that the other person needs. This. <laughs> okay, yeah, underwear. You need that. <laughs> and I got you a glass water bottle. Ah, to pour all that water in. Yes. That's a good one. Something um, the other person, for the other person to try. <laughs> this is for you to try. <laughs> I don't know if you like it or size. not. Small. Yeah, okay. And something for the other person to try. Smoothie Skittles. Yeah, I like Skittles. Everything. See? I'm not. Yeah, that's probably all you though. It was me. Hey, <laughs> who won? It wasn't a competition. Who won? It was a competition. It was a challenge. A challenge means there's a winner or a loser. Just a fun activity. Who won? You. Yeah. <laughs> I am the champion. I've been thinking about this for fucking day. Wow. I'm ready to chop this bad boy up. Yum 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 Shut up. Alright babe, so the first thing you're gonna taste is the Oreo ice cream. Okay. That's a big spoon. Fucking eat it. What if I want half of that? I actually didn't make this when I was in jail oh. because when you're on maximum security, you don't get much um, access, if not no access to a freezer at all. So you couldn't really make this unless you were a sweeper. Mm. When you get to minimum security, you can buy ice cream on the buy up anyway. So there was no point in making this. So the minimum security, you get access to a freezer, but you actually can buy ice cream. So why are you buying this? Or why are you making this? What? <laughs> no? No? It's okay. I like it. I can see why. What? People would like it. It tastes like frozen cake. Frozen? <laughs> With <our> Oreos. <laughs> but it's nice. Haiti. Straight Haiti. That's so good. So good, fam. Check this out, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I can't even buy it. I'll put it down there. So, guys, I probably should have used regular condensed milk. But I decided to go as vegan as possible. Yeah, the, the caramel just isn't set as the way I wanted it to. Alright, you can hear entertainment in the background. Back to One Out TV. We are here with my girlfriend. We're gonna do a bit of boxing in the backyard. Is that right, babe? Mm -hmm. And my dogs. Cardi, look at the camera. See how you last after five rounds. Bye! <laughs> Top G in a Bugatti mm. We are tipping at the party Poor bear, girl, like tell me say she want me Richer than the every town, I feel look for me Young I'm a sassy, see the fat down The descent set up on me I'm from girl, I suck you, she near me cut in a seat Them life, yeah, my dis, design a cash in I'm everything, so my bill, I re-arrange me Yes, I'm money for my mind, you do And I never know how funny, book a tycoon All a skull and jaggy money that we like, do. You are here, car, we no broke like you Richness, I see Hi guys, so I got my client Janine weighing in, her second weigh in, she's been doing really good, she just got under 60 the other day, so we're weighing in to see how much she is now. Janine wants to spar me, post our weigh in, which she's done a really good job, she lost 3% body fat, and it was all fat too, so 3 kilos. Anyway, she wants to spar me, 3 minute round, I guess she's not happy with all the workouts that I gave her. <laughs>
training in the gym on a new program, strength and conditioning program by Maddie Nguyen, Movement SNC. I've always loved doing everything in fitness, like overtraining myself, like doing a bit of bodybuilding stuff, some calisthenics, uh, a bit of yoga, fighting, etc. Like trying to do a bit of everything. Now that I really want to fight, I thought, you know, I should really focus on just fighting and just the strength and conditioning part of fighting. And I realized that like over the years, like, you know, you can't be 75% good across the whole board of all your stats and still excel in one competition. You have to focus on that one competitive format if you really wanted to excel in it or compete in it. So I'm taking a step back from everything else and just focusing on strength and conditioning for fighting, Muay Thai. Guys, so I'm on the way to meet up with Alan Fu, who's a successful entrepreneur. He has a couple of brands, a couple of businesses. I wanted to sit him down and ask him a couple of questions and how I could you know, somewhat get to where he is now, what things I should do, and yeah. So, I just had a meeting with Alan Fu, top bloke, nice guy. I fucking love his energy, I love his vibe, I love his knowledge. I'm really excited to, you know, work with him and have him on as my mentor. In terms of like my goals reaching like, a, like become a millionaire, I'm really fucking looking forward to this, eh? This is the next step to my life and um, big things coming, eh guys? Alan's a very intelligent bloke. He really gave me a, a very good eye-opener on what I need to focus on. He gave me a roadmap of what I need. I'm so excited that I chose him to be my, my business mentor. I'm actually really excited, guys, so stay tuned. So this guy comes up to me in the gym, nice guy. I said hello to him a couple of times. You know, he probably has some things going on in his life. I don't know what's going on in his life, but he came up to me and he was like, hey, man, it's a Sunday, mind you, so we're not staffed. I'm just there training myself. He goes, bro, can I cancel my membership today? And I go, oh, bro, what's wrong, man? Why are you canceling your membership? And he's like, man, I just, um, I don't think training is for me. And I go, you know, what do you mean no, training is not for you, bro? How can training not be for you? In my mind, I'm like, obviously, you know, I have to take into account that maybe some things, some other things are probably going on in this world that I don't know about. And I go, bro, if you want to cancel, it's all good, you know, don't stress, okay? But, like, you know, I just want to know why you want to cancel. Like, you know, it's got to be like an adequate reason because, you know, the gym only benefits people. Training, you know, improves your mental health, your functionality, your muscle mass, your bone density, everything. I realized for a second that I've got no problem with people who are weak. My only problem is if people choose to remain weak, you know, because that's a decision. That's a decision on your life. You're choosing to not better yourself in every way possible. For me personally, I don't like having those type of people around me. I like having people around me who like, you know, go for shit and they still turn up to the gym because that's a good vibe. That's the type of energy that I have inside my life. And I thought, yeah, you know what, bro, you can quit, man. I'll cancel your membership right now, bro. Yeah. That's my little rant about people fucking quitting and shit. I like quitters around me. It's very negative energy. <laughs> 